Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I am bringing you my silver or gold multifaceted boxes. Um, they are slightly different um, in terms, there are quite a few of these on the internet. Um, the one I found had the centimetres, which is this one, um, but not the inches. So I adapted it and made the inches one. Um, it's what I would class as a patient project because you need to let things dry before you can move on to the next stage. Um, I've also made this um, so that as you untie the ribbon you can then pull the base out. So the ribbon is looped around the base and then it goes up through the centre and you tie your bow at the top. So you could actually use it um, as a hanging decoration as well if you wanted to. The centimetre one um, I'm not as happy with the DSP, um, I think that the centimetre version works better and to be honest the measurements are a lot easier as well, um, but I persevered and I made it so I will have a go at recreating this for you. Uh, Knight of Navy, Merry Malo, and today I'm using Mossy Meadow, not one I've used a great deal of but I actually thought it would look really nice with the gold so let's go with it. Oh, the sun's shining right where I have my notes, that's not helpful. Okay, so let's start with the base, which is your square piece of card. Now, um, yeah, you're going to need your trimmer for most of these measurements if you're doing it in, well, inches or centimetres, to be fair. Okay, so for your base... 7 and 11 sixteenths by 7 and 11 sixteenths. 19.9 by 19.9 centimetres actually you don't need your thing for this but anyway um two and a half inches uh six and a half centimetres on all four sides uh, again basic box super simple score your four sides and then cut your four corners Okay, so that's that bit done. Fold and burnish. As I say, these don't. This bit doesn't have any DSP or anything on, so you don't have to mess too much with that. Um, when I cut these side panels, I'm going to do it slightly differently. Um, still the same scenario. So your very first. Just move that out of the way. Your very first corner, whichever you choose cut down the wedges, down the side there and your wedge there, then rotate anti-clockwise and repeat. So cut the corner, cut down there, cut the wedge, rotate, repeat. Okay, so corner, down, wedge, rotate, wedge, Cut down this piece here and wedge again. So you're left with this shape. And the reason for this is because these are a little bit bigger. So you would end up with quite a thick amount of card if that was to go that side as well. So instead, it literally just works it so that they all adhere to each other. So you've actually got a double strength on all sides makes it a little bit easier so in with the adhesive just make sure i get the edges because i always forget the edges and then i have a gap and it annoys me so <laughs> adhesive on all of those get my good old sturdy pegs out okay so first side peg it there second side lined up, peg it there and then I'm just going to tuck that around so that I can not pull it too much Oops, one and then this last one onto there okay and as you can see now it's sturdy on all four sides so let's pop that to one side and make the top part so for the lid, if you like, the faceted lid, you need a piece that is four and three quarters by an A4 sheet, 12 centimetres by an A4 sheet. 
So get your trimmer. Um, on the short side, you're going to score at two inches, five and a half centimetres. And then rotate it anti-clockwise. And on the long side, let me just get my arm out. <laughs> on the long side, we're going to score at two and three quarters inches. So two and three quarters, five and a half, eight and a quarter, and eleven. And in centimetres, that will be 7, 14, 21 and 28. Simples. Then we're going to go back to the start again. And now we're going to mark at 1 and 3 eighths. Just a little score there. 1 and 3 eighths. 4 and 1 sixteenth. 6 and 13 sixteenths. So... Um, do all six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, and nine and nine sixteenths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mark again. And in centimeters, you will need to mark at three and a half, ten and a half, seventeen and a half, and twenty-four and a half. Okay. Then we have the fun part. Get that delightful ruler and we are going to score from corner to corner on all four pieces. Then we're going to go back the other way. So you're actually scoring a cross across the centre of your boxes. And then where you've put your little mark, you are going to score down to the cross centre of your cross. Okay, fabulous. So you should have that marking on yours. Then we fold and burnish our score lines. So we can do all the straight ones that we did on our trimmer. And then we're going to go in and we're going to fold our score lines here. Okay, so again, just work your way down. You can get them to fold the correct way. Just, as I say, fiddly and you need a little bit of patience. Oops. And make sure you stick with your score lines. Don't let them, don't let the card tell you where it's going. You tell it where it's going. There we go. Last one. Okay, so once you've done that, you then need to adhere this all together. So it's just a normal square if you think of it like this without all the score lines. So we're just going to score, uh, sorry, adhere these bits together here. So you want adhesive along here. Now you can use wet glue and hang on and leave it to dry. I am going to use my seal plus just because obviously you don't want me sitting here for 10 minutes waiting for my adhesive to dry. So fold over like so. And then what you will notice is, where's my original box? So what you want is the bottom here to pop out. Okay, so if you, if you imagine the bottom part popping out and these lines going in. 
okay so they go in and as you see look the bottom pops out but you want this bit to pop in too okay so you're almost pinching those bits together you work your way round so pop the bottom out pinch those bits as I say it does all come together and it's easier as I say if you pinch this bit first because then the rest sort of follows suit and then as you can see it gets folded down there we go and that's how you then get your faceted part and you need then your DSP so I have four pieces here that will go around the base so we'll get those stuck on um, these are two and a half by one and three quarters but that's why is that oh crumbs <laughs> I've totally messed that up totally that should have been the part that we scored uh, that we left and this should have been the bit we scored okay let's just see how that pans out on here because my um I don't even know if this is going to work now oh there we go oh okay no it's okay I'll just need to ignore me I've just got the wrong pieces of oh, my goodness wrong pieces of DSP so I have this one and these are two and a half by one and three quarters <laughs> so these are going to go round the bottom of here oh my goodness complex boxes and that's what happens right so pop your DSP on the bottom panels so no ignore me I haven't done it wrong I've done it exactly as I should have done just picked the wrong pieces of DSP up that was all so pop your strips of DSP on your box there I knew that was going to happen but it's all good because I had one ready here so add your DSP on and then for these top sections you need four pieces that are two and a half by two and a half or six by six and a half now you'll notice I only have three for some strange reason when you do inches the squares that I use are square these aren't for the centimeter one these are slightly wider across the bottom and narrower for this part so you need four for centimeters I'm gonna sneeze oh bless me sorry um, and three if you're doing inches and all you're gonna do is pop them in your <coughs> excuse me pop them in your trimmer point and point on your track cut them rotate them round point and point in track just make sure that they are still in um, the square as it were and cut them and there you have your four pieces now if you're doing the centimeter one keep them as such because you'll need to make sure you get the right pieces when you adhere so that's that hold that there trim that one and then my last one here oh, sorry I didn't say that those pieces that I put on the base the two and a half by one and three quarters are six and a half by five and a half sorry I realized I didn't give the centimeters for that these ones are two and a half by two and a half six by six and a half so you will need to make sure you put them on these three sides because that bit doesn't get seen so on these three sides 
So I'm coming in with my uh, DSP. So I'm going to pop one there, one on here. And like I said, I'm not overly taking care with sticking this on, but you will be a bit more care careful when you're doing it. So as you can see now, my third piece that I have here will fit on here, but that doesn't work when you do centimetres. So you will need four pieces and unfortunately have a little bit left over. So I'm just going to stick all these on. And the patience part is the next part. Trust me. Nearly there. Oh, now the dogs are in the garden barking. That's good. My neighbours are having an extension built and so all the noise and the banging makes them bark a bit more than normal. Bless them. At least it's cooler at the moment, which I am not sorry about. Mind you, it is when I'm filming this, although we've been told that August is going to be warm, so oh joy. Okay, so all those parts now stuck on. Get your gorgeous ribbon. Pop your base over the centre. Make sure you trim the end off, because that's always helpful. And then I found... If you, you've got enough of it, make sure it's a equal length. Pop them through here and then obviously pop your... Make sure they're not twisted so they sit flat. So that's that bit done. And then this one goes like so. And it'll only go so far down anyway because of how it's designed but then your ribbon is round your base. So this is the patience part. What you then need to do is get some wet glue and adhere these parts together. Oops. So you're gonna glue those two together. Now I did find that you can just, no you can't, is it these that are a bit stronger? Yes. So these clips will hold them. Make sure you don't get your ribbon stuck. And the same with this one, because these will fold like so. They will wait and adhere relatively quickly, to be fair, because there's no pressure on those. But when you come to do the other ones, so you have to make sure your ribbon's out of the way, that's the main thing. So I'm going to be brave and take these off, but you would probably be wise to leave them for quite some time to hold. Take those off and then your next point is you need to put these two together and glue those as well. Because obviously once you undo your ribbon, you will then slide the lid off so it will stay intact but you then need to add adhesive to here. Now I found that I was wedging it between punches and books and all sorts to hold this glue in place. If you can see on this one, I didn't really leave it long enough so I have a little gap, but my centimetre one worked really quite well. Um, but as I say, there's no point in me trying to glue it now because it's wanting to spring open so you have to wedge it. But then all you need to do is tie your bow, not quite that low, like so. And there you have it. That will be your multifaceted box. But there they all are. And this is why I said I wasn't overly impressed with the DSP. It perhaps needs to be a fraction smaller, but it does sit on other pieces really nicely. Um, so yeah. Hope you like them. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you all again very soon.